Hi everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Ishani. I am the senior psychologist at Mom's Belief, and uh, all the parents we work with internationally, I, I look after. Um, and just a little bit about myself. So my background is in psychology, in neuroscience, and in counseling psychology. Right. So. Uh, and uh, we have our main guest speaker over here, Dragna, and she would be talking about uh, toilet training today. And she, she is a master's in special education and rehabilitation. She's also currently pursuing her second master's as well. Uh, she has 11 years of work experience working with uh, children with uh, developmental um, issues and uh, yeah she knows uh, she said she knows sign language as well so she's pretty <laughs> eclectic and uh, today she's going to talk to us about how to toilet train our child better so uh, the floor is all yours Ragna thank you so much yes welcome all it's so nice to see you in this much number. And just to make a comment for this to sign language, only basic sign language, okay? Just <laughs> <laughs> help communicating with nonverbal children, the basic stuff, okay? Right. Uh, so we will start with our toilet training. I will share my screen. All right. Sorry about this uh, short wait. As I said, we will start with our toilet training children with autism. Um, we all know that toilet training can be challenging for children with autism spectrum disorders, and there are many reasons why it can take a long time. Uh, many children with autism learn to use the toilet at late age. Typically, uh, we start with toilet training with the neurotypical children around two years or a little bit before, it depends. But it uh, can take longer for children with autism and it, go, it, it can go up to four or five years of age. Most children learn to urinate and have bowel movements in the toilet later than other children, as I said, around four or five years old. Toilet training is seen uh, by all parents uh, very important as an important developmental stage for their child. For a parent of an, an autistic child, this will take patience, understanding, observation of signs of readiness to move toward independent toileting. That's the main goal, to be independent in using the toilet. Each child with autism is different, as we all know, and uh, they can have some common problems uh, with toileting. And knowing about these problems can help you come up with different ways. So we will try today to present and think about one way how to train a child with autism, all right, for toilet training. I will just show you now the overview of our uh, seminar or webinar. So we will talk about uh, common barriers, uh, signs of toilet training readiness, diapers or underwear, sitting or standing for boys, bathroom environment and our training trip training or scheduled training, quick points to practice and tips to increase toilet success. And then we will create toilet plan with example. And uh, we will go over some common questions that I uh, came up with, but uh, at the end you can think about some questions or problems that you're personally facing and you can uh, ask and we will um, try to come up with a solution. And the last one is when to give break or to uh, when to give up or take a break. Okay, so let's start first. What are the common uh, barriers for our children, individuals with autistic autistic spectrum disorder? So we have here common um, uh, communication and understanding. That's one of the most important barrier and most common barrier with children. Uh, with autism, and there are a range of communication skills. They can be no vocal, no verbal, as I said, so you can come up with some sign language or your own, or you can take your child to, to learn sign, sign language. Most of the families learn sign language for, 
for a child who is nonverbal. We have echolalia, which is very common with the children with autism, literal interpretations, um, and uh, limited initiations. Children with autism have trouble understanding and using language, no matter what we are trying to teach them. That's, that's how it is. And do not expect from your child uh, to ask, unless it's high functional autism, uh, to ask to use the toilet. Often our children need to be exactly taught how to ask to use the toilet and how to ask to do whatever, to eat or to, uh, to sleep. They need to say, I want this, I want that. So we need to exactly and explicitly taught them how to ask to use the toilet. Mainly children with autism have no problems with learning to use the toilet once they understand what is expected of them. And uh, they have a practice with rewards uh, to getting that right. So we have to use some tools to train them how to use the toilet. However, some children do have difficulties. These may often be related to a change in routine and uh, they find it difficult to understand and therefore they become anxious or upset. So this is most important thing for children with autism, especially if it is changing the routine. We know how much uh, problems that can rise up. Using stories, using pictures, other photos, um, before introducing any new routine can help make things predictable. That is the most essential thing. Anticipation with children with autism. Anticipation is something that we need to, uh, we need to introduce what is happening next, what will happen in after the, the activity, after one activity, what is happening next. So same with the toilet. Anxiety. Some, children's, some children have anxiety or fear um, and they're afraid of sitting on the toilet seats or hearing toilets flush and getting used to toilet by using a visual schedule and making it part of the routine can make it less scary. So we need to use some schedule, visuals, toilets, but that is one barrier that can uh, make toilet training harder for us and for a child if they have anxiety or any kind of fear. Need for sameness or routine. Uh, we all know that uh, children with autism are all about routines and when uh, the routine is disrupted, they are anxious, they display challenging behavior and um, many children, they have their own way of urinating and having bowel movements and learning new ways can be very hard. Uh, for example, I had uh, in, uh, in the classroom a child who when when he wanted to go to toilet, he was running around the classroom and taking off all his clothes and running out of the classroom. He knew where was the toilet and he was sitting in the toilet all without the clothes until he finished. So that was his way. But parents, they, had, they wanted him to actually ask for toilet, go undress and do whatever he needs to do, finish, wash hands. And they wanted him to have a structure in that routine all right but some as i mentioned they have own ways of using the toilet body issues or sensory issues that is very common and some children with autism spectrum disorder may not be aware that they need to go to toilet mm -hmm. and they they are not aware that the wet is that the clothes is wet or soiled sensitive to certain textures or any other stimuli children uh, with autism have difficulty with even minor routine changes. Not only are we attempting to teach a new goal, but we are altering a routine because going in the diaper, having the sensory feel of the diaper is a routine. They got used to that. And some children have gotten, uh, how I can say that condition, condition to the diaper as the place to pass urine or stool and we are in effect asking them to stop this conditioned response. Uh, it can be very, very difficult and challenging for parents or caregivers, nannies, whoever is dealing with the child during the day or teachers if the child is at school. Sensory issues create significant uh, impediments. Yes, the obstacles. We are asking the child to link the body sensation to function, which may be difficult for the child with autism. The bathroom, toilet, seats, flushing, they may be aversive to too much stimuli. That can be very hard. 
In some cases, the child enjoys the product and we don't want even to go there. That's a sensory stimuli and we must be prepared with the strategies, strategies to deal with that issue if they're um, they enjoying sensory um, product, right? Dressing, we don't want to make any demands and put any other demands when we go to the toilet in front of the child. So challenges can be managing clothing. Some children have difficulty pulling their pants up, underwear down. Um, they may have uh, different motor difficulties and they cannot have uh, coordination, body coordination, and so on and so on. But dressing can be one of the obstacles. And using different toilets. As I said, maybe the child is using toilet at school, but it's hard to, for him to use the toilet at home. Some children got used to that routines at school, but on other places, restrooms, other public restrooms or your friend's house, uh, they found it difficult to go. And um, what else is next? We have here apparent, apparent lack of motivation that can be masking altered perception of social appropriatenesses, challenges with attention, organization, sequencing, motor difficulties, inconsistent or uh, absent imitation skills, as I mentioned. And physical, physical barrier, if your child have any physical barrier or medical condition and that prevents him to go to the toilet, you have to uh, talk and uh, with your uh, child's pediatrician, okay? These are common barriers that can stop us train our child with autism to use the toilet. So let's move on to our next uh, to our next slide, which says signs of toilet training readiness. Signs of toilet training readiness are very important before we, and essential because we cannot try to teach a child to go to toilet if he is not physically able, as the first point says, they need to be physical, physically able. They need to sit upright and be able to sit upright for five minutes or more they need to be able to hold the urine for at least an hour. Uh, we don't want them to have no um, contraindicated medical conditions. And they need to be able to help undress self or be able to undress themselves on their own. Second one is dryness. What it means, if we want to try to toilet train a child, he needs to show uh, signs to be able to be dry one or two hours at a time. He needs to be able to stay dry during naps and the child needs to have regular bowel movements. Mental readiness and awareness. As I mentioned at the beginning, mental age greater than two years old. Also, child has to be able to follow one step direction. So we cannot teach the child toilet training if, cannot, if he cannot understand uh, one step directions. Okay, stand up and go open the door or just stand up. That's actually one step direction, stand up. Go to the door, open the door, sit on the uh, toilet bowl and so on and so on. So we need to observe and we need to monitor and we need to understand that our child actually understands one step directions. And we need to monitor also if our child is uh, interested in toileting or the bathroom and show awareness of being wet. That is uh, vital in these training steps. They need to be aware of being wet. These steps, are guidances for developing child who has no physical limitations. So we are not dealing here with the child who is in a wheelchair or either have any medical, medical conditions are constantly uh, constipated and so on. So exceptions maybe exist for those who are physically or cognitively unable to complete these all steps and signs of training readiness, toilet training readiness. So where do I start? You as a parent, what should you think about before you actually start with the training? You cannot just decide one day and I will, I will go and I will train my child. Okay, so we will go and move on. What are we going to do? Are we going to use diapers or underwear? 
Sometimes children use diapers while at school, at home don't. And sometimes children use underwear while at school, but at home they feel comfortable with, with diapers, but don't delay the underwear. Move your child into underwear as soon as possible. I, I realize that this seems maybe intimidating step for many parents, but it is vital. Let's, let's face it here, they're modern diapers, full ups, they can be too good at whisking away the pee. And as a result, your child would not realize that he has urinated and that uh, he is wet. Putting your child in underwear actually helps him associate the accident with the discomfort of wetness on, on his skin, right? And you want your child to feel sensation when they urinate in their underwear or you want them to connect the sensation. This is building their awareness and we have to work on moving into the underwear as soon as possible. You don't want, most important thing, you don't want them to sit wet in a, in a soil diaper since they got used to the feeling very easily. You want them to notice right away and change that. They will learn the difference between wet and dry. I personally do not recommend or advise any parents to use pull-ups since it's uh, essentially the same thing as a diaper. Um, you can use uh, training underwear, like a thicker underwear or uh, plastic pants that can go over uh, the regular underwear that avoid, uh, avoids the mess and uh, um, still you know, builds uh, the child's uh, awareness of being uh, wet and uh, uh, that the child has urinated. Yes, that wet sensation. Underwear is also great for her because it's uh, inexpensive and it's reusable. And children also feel good wearing the underwear since it's uh, more likely that uh, they're doing something like uh, big kids and they can they can feel excited about the wearing wearing the. Uh, the underwear, they can boost their feeling uh, about toilet training. Some kids like to be involved, for example, in um, the process of choosing the underwear. They like to choose cool characters, underwear, and so on. And if you don't want to tra train at night, it's okay to stay with pull-ups, but change them the second they wake up and put it up right before bed. So that's all about diapers and underwear. So it is recommended to go to and move on to underwear as soon as possible. Proper dress. Proper dress is essential because as I mentioned before, we don't want to put any extra demands when we go to toilet. When we actually come to that step that we are in front of the toilet bowl, we don't want to at that moment teach child how to undress and dress, how to open the pants. So go with elastic elastic pants, loosely fit pants, as I mentioned here, skirts or dresses for girls and shorter shirts, because some shirts can be long and then child needs to roll up the shirt, put and hold at the same time sh uh, shirt and uh, pants, and it can be too challenging. So um, don't go with the uh, longer, uh, longer shirts. And no zippers, as I mentioned here on the right side, tight pants, leggings, or overalls, unzies. Just make as simple as possible dress for your child when you child when you toilet train. Standing um, uh, versus sitting. Uh, some children are scared of sitting on the toilet bowl. They are even scared to go inside the toilet, right? But if they are afraid of the toilet, use the transitional potty that can encourage them to sit on that. You may need to have the sit, you, you may need to have your child sit on outside if they don't want to go inside the bathroom and slowly transition in the bathroom. In that process, it's very important to reinforce your child for sitting on a transitional potty for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30, you will decide individually for your child. Once your child can sit on the transitional potty, encourage your child to sit on the big potty. You can say, let's go inside the bathroom now and use the big potty first. After that, you can, um, you can practice sitting on the toilet with the seat down and they, you, <clears throat> I'm sorry, um, uh, then uh, when the child sits on the toilet with the seat up on the potty seat, maybe, yes, you can use this uh, tool and, um, 
You can start also sitting on a big body for 10 seconds, reinforce your child for doing that. Increase the time, increase the time every time you do the, uh, the toilet trip um, until, until, until they feel comfortable, right? Because that uh, experience needs to be comfortable. Um, do not get uh, discouraged because um, process can take many weeks, but with consistency, with your patience, uh, with your dedication, your child will eventually feel comfortable sitting on the toilet, that's for sure. Typically, we, I do not recommend teaching standing uh, urination for boys until they're fully bowel trained. Some children in this situation, boys, may strain during the urination and that can may, uh, end up with the child defecating while standing. And we don't even want to get to these issues uh, that can arise from, from poor aim. Uh, let's just say that many problems can be avoided by teaching sitting urination first for boys and for girls. If you have a son with any kind of autistic spectrum disorder um, and he is used to sit uh, while urinating, you can teach him how to urinate while standing by providing a visual chart or how boys use the toilet. If he is afraid or does not want to touch his privates, okay, uh, you can ask a trusted female family, a female uh, a male family member to show how to aim in the toilet bowl uh, when you want to train standing. You may also use some target objects such as like um, uh, colored toilet paper or a paper boat to encourage him to urinate in the bowel. All right, that's the, that's the issue. Um, not issue, like an advice. So first let's train, toilet train for sitting. And then once they have regular bowel movements, we can teach them how to uh, urinate while standing. Bathroom environment. What do we think uh, when we say bathroom environment? Bathroom environment is essential, especially when we have children who uh, don't like uh, transitions, don't like to unexpectedly go to one room to another. And um, there are many sensory factors, of course, that can affect the toilet process, toileting process, yes. Uh, your child uh, may be either uh, hypersensitive to sensory input or be hyposensitive and have low sensory awareness. Sensory issues may cause your child to feel anxious, stressed in the bathroom, fears, anything. And uh, what you should do? You should try calming techniques to make toileting experience and the bathroom environment welcoming and relaxed. Relaxation is key to successful toilet training. And uh, to help your child relax and minimize these negative, negative reactions, his negative reactions in the toilet, I will give you some tips and you can try, for example, to play some calming music if your child likes to listen to music. Um, read his favorite book, for example, or uh, short stories, small books, uh, uh, picture books, keep uh, noise, including conversation to a minimum. If your child is comfortable, you can turn on the water. If it's not distracting, you can also sing a special song together. You can come up with a song that, it's, that you use and sing only when you go to the bathroom. Uh, you can provide some tactile toys that tend to be calming, for example, squishy balls, something like that. You can also make uh, your child to help uh, set up the bathroom environment at a non toileting time. So you can go outside, uh, at, um, uh, sorry, you can go at the time when it's not time for toilet training to the toilet to organize the towels, toilet papers, I don't know what you have in the toilet, uh, lotions, they can just uh, be in the toilet and get used to the, uh, the, the room itself, okay? Um, you can also use a, 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 a stool under your child's feet to promote stability because feeling his feet on the, on the ground, on the stool, um, will help him feel more secure, that's for sure, and uh, help him regulate his, uh, his body. Right, if they have loose legs, they not feel comfortable, they not feel safe. 
uh, we have a lot of issues with the children with the autism spectrum disorder, so we want to make them as comfortable as possible. Um, also, you can dim the lights down if the lights, uh, lights are too harsh or too bright. You can use a candle or a, a torch on the side or any, any, anything that can be helpful to dim the strong light in the bathroom. That is all about bathroom environment and you can come up with different ways to help your child feeling safe and comfortable in the bathroom while in the bathroom. So we will now uh, talk about our trip or schedule training. And I will read this slide because this trip training or schedule training helps children learn toileting skills without placing other demands on them. And that is uh, vital in these steps. Adults set the schedule and help train the child body to follow the schedule. That is the main, uh, main goal for us. What do we have to uh, do when we think about making this schedule? You have to uh, arrange sit for six. What does this mean? Set, what does this mean? That means that you need to set a goal for six toilet seats per day in the morning, after waking up, after breakfast, after lunch, after snack, after dinner, before, before going back to bed. At first, trips can be short, as little as five seconds, for example, per trip. We do one longer trip each day to work on bowel movements. Over time, toilet seats can be longer, for example, up to 10 minutes, or how long, uh, how, as long as they need to, to finish what they went there for. So, um, in this process, setting the timer can help. And um, with the timer, you, you can let your child know when the toilet seat can end. And uh, your toilet is, your toilet, your, uh, your child is also allowed to get up from the toilet immediately or as soon as, as, as they finish. Um, and uh, they no, 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 no need to sit on the toilet after the work is done. The next one is don't ask, tell. So we are focusing here on the communication skills. Don't ask your child to go to the toilet. Don't go and say, do you want to go to the toilet? Do not wait for them to tell you they need to go to the toilet and to say yes when they are asked. Tell them it is time for a toilet trip. Use in these types of prompts. You, you can use different types of prompts for this. And um, they can be verbal prompts. So state the child, time for bathroom, so walk to the bathroom, let's go, it's time for toilet trip. You can uh, uh, do, uh, you can use uh, visual prompts. You can show your child a picture uh, of the bathroom symbol, or uh, you can use modeling or gesturing, just point to the, towards the bathroom, stand up and point to the bathroom, or you can combine, of course, um, you can combine these prompts where an adult or you show the, the picture and makes the verbal direction at nearly the same time. Picture icons used for prompting should be the same as those they're using uh, in the child's classroom or an individual schedule. So you want to have the same pictures for uh, toilet training at school at, uh, and at home. So you have to communicate with teachers, therapists, or wherever your child goes to, to school. Physical assistance. Physical assistance means that you can help your child hand over hand help. You can um, help your child with a partial physical assistance to get the child started. Take the child's hand and use a gentle touch or the, on the shoulder or elbow to begin to guide him uh, towards the bathroom or full physical assistance throughout the entire step of the task. If needed, hold the child's hand until you reach the bathroom. So you can hold partial gentle push on your elbow, on the shoulder, or you can just touch and say, it's time for bathroom. Schedule, make the toilet trips parts uh, uh, very easy and you have to uh, do that every day. And you have to incorporate this schedule in your plan and you have to plan toilet trips around your usual schedule and stick with the same times of the day or the same daily activities. So we don't want to have any um, extra changes in the routine. As we mentioned, routines 
are something that our children with autism are depend on. Communicate, what it means. This means that you need to use the simple words, signs or pictures during each trip. This, how this will help? This will help your child learn the toileting language. For example, um, for example, okay, John, sit on the toilet so you can have a wee, wee wee or pee pee. I don't know what is common for your culture, for your, uh, in your country, in your language, but use something that is common and that your child will understand. This will, uh, Clear, this will be more clear than asking your child to sit on the toilet and uh, place and use other words that are too complicated. And that will help him understand what to do. Choose one word, one word to refer to going to the toilet and get everyone in the family to use it. So everyone needs to use the same language. For example, always say toilet or whatever your family is, is comfortable with. Uh, teach your child um, a way of uh, letting teachers and uh, uh, teachers know that she needs to go to the toilet. And this also can include nonverbal signs, as I mentioned, or uh, to use picture or uh, verbalized words, any that you're comfortable with. So one simple word for toilet, for urination, and uh, or picture or a, a special word that you will come up. Everyone needs to use the same language. Keep trying. Keep trying <laughs> refers to this, that this process can take a long time. They say it takes three weeks to make a habit. Once you outline the routine and methods, yes, that is important to have routine and methods, keep working towards the same goal for two, three weeks and be consistent. Make a visual schedule, make a visual schedule. Hmm. This means that pictures may help your child know what to expect during the toilet trips. And I will give you an example of uh, toilet uh, uh, steps at the end. And uh, take, uh, take these pictures of items in your bathroom and put it on a wall next to the toilet bowl or at the door, wherever you feel that it's going to be convenient for your child to see or uh, place the pictures in order on a piece of paper to show your child each step of the toilet trip. There are also different websites with toileting pictures that you can print out, they're free. And um, that would be it for visual schedule. I'll give, you the, I'll give you the example at the end, but also what else, yes, what else came up now? You can also take some objects from the toilet, uh, like a toilet roll and show the real object and say it's time for, for toilet. All right, identify rewards. Rewards are very powerful weapon in working with children with special needs, any type of disability, especially with children with autism spectrum uh, dis disorder. Rewards should be used very carefully. And uh, when the child has a toileting success in this case, uh, you should affirm him by smiling, clapping, any kind of praising. You can also provide treats. The ultimate reward for the child is staying comfortable and dry, and the child should be praised for staying dry. That's the, that's, that is essential. Child should be praised for staying dry. Give specific and positive feedback for each step in the toilet process when your child achieved that, that step. You should uh, make a list of your child's favorite things like foods, toys, videos, any kind of objects they like to play with. Uh, think of um, which ones will be easiest to give your child as soon as, uh, as they finish the toilet routine they, they went there or uh, has bowel movement. A uh, small food item works the best, fruit snack, cracker, chocolate chip. Um, in addition to, to, to giving the rewards for going into the toilet, you can also give a child time to do his favorite activity after the toilet trip is over. So uh, you can say, okay, once you are done and you, are success you successfully finish this, you can have five minutes of iPad or whatever they like to do the most. Timer is... Um, a good tool and uh, 
when we use timer, uh, we use it to few students that it's time to go to, to, the, to the toilet. When the timer goes off, you will take your child to the bathroom and say time to go to the bathroom and on the opposite and increase the amount of the time between setting the timer as, as your child remains dry for longer periods of time. You need to increase the time because they will stay dependent on the timer uh, longer. So you need to increase and eventually you will stop using the timer. At the beginning, it can be very hard, but it works. Quick points to practice. I, uh, I just wanted to make a, uh, a comment on this, uh, uh, that it works. I used to work as a private therapist for a local family here in UAE. Uh, I was in charge for one girl. Um, she was autistic, non-verbal, and she had uh, troubles with the toileting. So I used this method together with uh, her two nannies and we trained the girl very successfully. And she is not you, she's not saying of course that she wants to use the toilet, but she has the initiative. She stands up and takes the picture and goes to the bathroom by herself. And she does and she finishes all the process and steps uh, while uh, re uh, requested in the, that routine. So it works. Quick points to practice. You need to be supportive and be calm, to use encouraging language. Whenever you're talking with children about toileting, you need to use positive words if they are nearby. And don't fuss over, uh, over accidents when your child uh, does, does have an accident, right? Don't uh, plead, don't uh, minimize discussing and teasing or, or other things that can have the uh, un unwanted result of uh, uh, reinforcing the, uh, the behavior, okay? So instead provide a brief reminder that you expect your child to use the toilet next time he needs to go. Then you can complete the cleanup with as little fanfare and discuss and discussion as, as, as possible, as, as least as possible, and save your attention for when your child is using or attempting to use the toilet. So don't uh, get angry, don't criticize, just make a comment, you need to use the toilet, you need to go in the toilet next time for doing that, clean up and move on, be supportive and be calm. Praise, praising is powerful. I love it in, in any kind of training and teaching. Uh, children appreciate praising and uh, praising uh, child's effort and cooperation, no matter how large or small, is, is vital. Um, stick to a schedule. Stick to a schedule. T stick to a schedule. I would like to uh, repeat this a hundred times because sticking to the schedule, it is crucial. Establish a time when toileting is practiced both in and outside the home and use the same words. Use the same words about toileting as mentioned before and make sure everyone is using the same plan. Talk with other people who work with your child, share toileting plan with them, request they stick to the same routine and language. No matter if you are with your child after school, nanny or any other caregiver, at school, therapists, teachers, you need to cooperate, you need to you need to talk with them if you want this to work. Key to success, keep language simple and keep toileting routines the same. That is something that is crucial. Keep language simple and keep toileting routines the same. Don't forget, keep repeat this, keep repeating this. All right. Tips to increase toilet success. We will now go to this and then we will create our plan and we will move on to uh, the points that our plan needs to have. What does it say here? Tips to increase toilet success. For three typical days, document your child's routine. To, to help you write your child's toilet program, track how long it takes between when your child drinks and when he or she is wet. Checking that uh, diaper frequently for 
or wetness every 15 minutes, for example, will help you decide when to schedule toilet trips. So you know when your child is typically uh, urinating on, or having bowel movements. Consider child's diet. What is that? Dietary changes, increasing fluids, fiber, for your child, fiber that your child eats and drinks, that can help your child feel the urge to use the toilet. The, the dietary tips uh, um, and, and diet is essential with children with autism. And we know that some children are refusing to eat uh, fruits and veggies and to eat uh, water. If you have that kind of problem, you need to consult your doctor and try to improve your child's diet so they can feel lighter and feel the urge to use the toilet. Make small changes in daily habits. What, it is, uh, what I meant under this, um, uh, that is a, a focus on dressing. Dress your child in easy to remove clothes, right? Change your child as soon as he or she becomes wet or soiled, change diapers, in or near the bathroom, involve your child in the cleanup process and, and so on. So if they were not involved in that before, try to do that, let them help you and let them uh, uh, remove their clothes, clean up, put the, the diaper in the, in the bin and so on. As it mentioning uh, the next, uh, next step is have your child put the waste from the diaper in the toilet when possible. So that will help understand that the, the waste goes in the, to in the toilet and uh, let them flush the toilet, let them wash hands after each diaper cha change, of course, and they can be very helpful. If you involve them step-by-step, step, they can be very, very helpful. Make sure that the toilet trips are comfortable. Uh, your child should be comfortable while sitting on the toilet, as we mentioned, use smaller, potty seat or provide a footstool, your child will not sit on a toilet. If your child will not sit on the toilet, um, work on sitting before beginning. So we cannot, we cannot teach toilet training if child is not able to sit on the, on the toilet. That is what is here um, pointed out. And think about your child's sensory needs as an environmental uh, sounds. If your child does not like certain sounds, smells, things um, that they touch in the bathroom, change this as much as you can change, make it plain or put whatever they like, take out everything that it's uh, too much for them. Just make it for them to feel, to, to have their sensory needs uh, met, right? have many pairs of underwear that is next during the toilet training. It is highly recommended for uh, important uh, for children to wear underwear, as we mentioned at the beginning, during the day especially. They need to feel when they are wet. Your child may wear rubber pants or pull-ups over underwear if necessary, but diapers or pull-ups may be used when your child is sleeping or is away from home, um, if you're going for a long trip or something like that. But during the day, they need to wear underwear and they need to feel that they are wet. They need to feel that sensation. Otherwise, they will not be aware. And one of the signs for toilet readiness is awareness, as we mentioned. Creating your child's child's toileting plan. Mm -hmm. I will show you now what this toileting plan should have uh, listed out. Goals, routine, how often, for how long, language, places, tools, and rewards. Goals. When making this plan, you need to make a goal. For example, let your child help or or uh, nanny or whoever is around to, to know your goal. You, you, out, you outline your helpers or for yourself, what are you trying to achieve for the given period of time? For example, um, the goal is to have um, John visit the restroom 15 minutes after the meal and sit on the toilet for five seconds. That can be a goal. Um, and it's very simple and it's achievable. So you need to train and go after, 
after the snack, after the meal, for 15 minutes to sit, uh, 15 minutes to sit on the toilet for five seconds. Routine, for how often and for how long? Uh, how, how often do we want, we want to, to, to train our child to go to the toilet? Include how often or what time the child should visit the restroom, right? Some examples in, include maybe every hour or uh, 15 minutes after drinking meals. For example, Tommy goes to the restroom 15 minutes after every meal and drink, as I mentioned. For how long? For how long? Uh, be sure to include how long your child is able to tolerate the bathroom trips. It may start with five seconds at the beginning. But the goal can be, for example, Tommy visits uh, the restroom for five seconds. He sits on the toilet. For the child who has never had any training on the bathroom and the child that we are training for the first time that has a lot of sensory issues, fear, anxieties, uh, this can be very simple step for the beginning. Language, as I, as I mentioned before, choose the words. Use words that work for your child. You know your child the best. Uh, come up with, a, for example, a special code for, for the toilet or for urination. Anything that it's used in your culture, in your language, <clears throat> sorry, in your, in your country. So you can say, okay, Tommy, now it's time to go pee-pee pee or wee-wee, whatever you're using. Okay, we have here places. Places where? Where does your child go to the bathroom? Where does your child go to the bathroom? School, home, you need to put that in the, in, the, in the schedule. What, think about the lights, are they bright or dim? How does light affect your child? What about noises in the bathroom? Fan, for example. What about the type of toilet paper? Should, we, should the door, for example, be open or, or closed? Who, who, who is going to the bathroom with your child? Is someone uh, with your child or just nearby or? or a helper or a nanny, therapist, whoever, is the door is open or, or what? So we will put in our schedule, for example, um, nanny stands outside the door, door is open, lights and fan are on. If that is what your child uh, can tolerate and what suits for him or her, okay? Tools, we need to include tools. What do we mean when we say tools, when we think about bathroom uh, toilet training? What tools are you using? Do you use a visual schedule? Do, you, do your child like to listen to music, for example, or read a book, uh, or I don't know, maybe uh, uh, this uh, goal can be that uh, this boy Tommy, my child uh, reads uh, his favorite book uh, uh, in the bathroom, while in the bathroom, or um, we sing uh, Wheels on the Bus song while we are in the bathroom, but keep it just for the bathroom. Any other tools, tool, uh, uh, footstool or a potty seat or whatever, you can put in this schedule. What tools are you going to use? And rewards. Rewards, as we mentioned, and I uh, again, I strongly believe that rewards are very powerful and that we need to use them as uh, smart as possible and as carefully as possible. And you need to uh, decide what activities earn a reward. What activities do not earn a reward? How do you uh, reward your child for a job well done? Are you just praising? Are you going to give a treat? Are you going to give an iPad or whatever? What happens if your child does not earn a reward? You need to come up with that also. For example, at this, at this point, uh, a uh, goal can be Tommy receives five minutes of iPad after, uh, after every visit to the bathroom. So this is what this uh, toilet training schedule needs to have. Goals, routine, how often, how long, language, places, tools, and rewards. Think about rewards, think about rewards hard. Think, think about your, your, your child favorite toy, favorite food, favorite, whatever favorite is for them and use that smart. And the most important thing is to keep reward only for the bathroom, if you want to have a bathroom toileting, toileting training success.
they need to work hard and they need to know what to expect when they finish right. All right, frequently asked questions, usually from parents. I came up here with some questions that we will answer. And after that, if you have any questions, you can ask, type or uh, raise hand and uh, we will try to, to answer and give you uh, give you the tips and advices for a solution. All right, the first question is, our child will use the pot at the school, but he refuses to use it at home. What should we do? This was uh, mentioned before, but uh, uh, something your son or daughter with the diagnosis of uh, autism spectrum disorder learns to do at school may be hard to do. Um, at home, it can be hard for him to do at home. It might help to have your son learn to use different bathrooms at school. Maybe that can, you can talk with the teachers and use words and ideas that the teachers use at school. You may need to start with simple steps at home. Yes. And start, for example, by walking into the bathroom or uh, add steps uh, one at a time until he's using the toilet at home. Um, and you need to practice uh, um, bathroom and uh, toilet trips in different bathrooms. If you have different bathrooms, if not, uh, use the bathroom in your friends' houses, cousins' houses, or public uh, in malls or other people's houses, and so on. So that is uh, what is vital here: communication between teachers, therapists, and parents, or whoever is taking care of child while at home to have a success in toilet training and using the toilet at home, if we have case like this. Let's move on to our next one. What if my child is afraid of the toilet and does not want to sit or <clears throat> go near the toilet? So in this point, we um, have to think about what is that that uh, is child afraid of? And when the children with autism are afraid of the toilet, as I mentioned at the beginning, we need to use the transition potty and practice uh, first sitting in the front of the bathroom and then slowly uh, introducing them uh, to the bathroom and moving in the bathroom in the potty, then sitting on the toilet with the seat down, then with the potty on, then with up slowly step by steps, as I mentioned before, and we already know that the toilet training can take a long time, but it is manageable. It is manageable and it is uh, uh, something that we can do to help our child using the toilet successfully. Do not, do not get discouraged. As we mentioned, this can take many weeks, but this with the potty train, potty uh, uh, training potty uh, in the front of the bathroom, slowly inside the bathroom, it works and it will get us to the um, desired result. We thought we had a good toileting program for our daughter, but it's not working. What are next steps? Uh, there, there are a number of steps you may want to take when something like this uh, rises, right? Uh, be sure that is not a medical reason and talk to your daughter's or, or uh, your child's uh, doctor to see if, uh, if child is constipated or to get ideas about changes in diet and so on. You have to first eliminate uh, the medical condition. Second one that you can do is to look at your daughter's toileting schedule, right? And make sure you're taking her when she's likely to urinate and uh, to have a bowel movement. So you have to, as we mentioned, observe, check the diaper, check the under underwear and make the schedule when they are likely to go to the toilet. Next thing that you can do is also think about uh, uh, changing rewards. I love rewards. <laughs> and uh, think, about, think about changing it. Make sure uh, your child likes the reward. It is uh, often helpful to think about what type of reward they're using at least every three months change uh, or maybe even often. 
All right, with that, this one, there are three, three advices that you can do. Next question is, I work on toileting all weekend with my son, but he didn't make any progress. How long should the process take? Uh, toileting takes a long time for many people and it helps uh, to be relaxed and uh, have patience. We need to have patience and be relaxed in this process. There is not any deadline for toileting. So we don't have to have, we don't have deadline. We don't have schedule when we need to finish with the training. This should be a small part of your life and uh, you can take break and try again when you have more energy or when your child seems ready again. All right, and remember that it can be hard to learn to go to toilet, that's for sure. And uh, practice toileting when it's a good time for you, you and your family. Uh, that way you will have the energy to work on this very important skill, right? Uh, over the long hour, yeah? On weekends, we will not make any progress if we work only on weekends. The work needs to be continuous process every day. All right. Our family has tried to help our son become toilet trained, but he is still wearing diapers. What should we do? This is uh, uh, something that is uh, serious. And uh, when someone receives a question like this, uh, we need to be aware what is behind this question. So is this child cognitively able to understand what is required for him? Does he have any behavioral issues? Does uh, he has any sensory issues? Um, things like that. You can, uh, you can seek help from some other special training specialists or a therapist, occupational therapist. Maybe that this child in this case uh, doesn't want to get um, uh, off the diaper. Uh, um, these professionals or anyone can help uh, uh, to have uh, intensive training, maybe some kind of intensive toilet training. I, for example, I had one uh, child that uh, didn't want to wear any uh, pants at all, only underwear, and he was coming to school in underwear. So we had to uh, cooperate and uh, have a joint uh, discussion with the occupational therapist. They have different te techniques to practice removing, actually putting on and off in this my case pants, but in this case, diapers, occupational therapy is uh, beneficial for, can be beneficial in this, in these cases, cases like this. And it can be um, very hard and it can take long time to learn this uh, complicated skill, right? So don't get discouraged. All right, our next question is, what if my child has a fear of flushing the toilet? So it's the same, it's the same as they have fear when uh, they don't want to go inside. And being afraid of flushing the toilet is common for children with autism, uh, any signs. Uh, and the flushing sound can be loud and scary, we know that, and uh, overwhelming and can uh, for their sensory system, right? Um, if child is uh, fearful of flushing the toilet, do not flush the toilet uh, while training with your child inside. Wait until uh, he or she right, is uh, out of the room or to flush easily. Okay, when your child is body trained and feels comfortable in the bathroom, have your child stand outside the bathroom when you're flushing the toilet. Then have them stand in the bathroom while you're uh, while wearing, for example, earplugs or uh, headset, headphones, uh, when you flush the toilet, that can be helpful also. At, uh, then, uh, then you can, after all of these steps, uh, at last you can have your child flush the toilet, right? Uh, by himself or herself. And eventually your child with autism will get used to the toilet flushing sound and uh, they will feel, they will um, be less fearful of it. Yeah, so step by step, small steps, baby steps every day in each skill, in, in, in anything that we want to teach our child with autism, we need to go step by step, small baby steps. 
All right, next one is, what if my child likes to play with the toilet water? It is very common that some children go inside the toilet and they can play if they want to. They open the, the, the toilet bowl and playing with toilet water means children with autism have a sensory need and it's not being met. That's, that's the reason. And uh, so you need to set up the appropriate places in your house where your child can play with the water, such as sink, bathtub, bidet, or I don't know what you have in the toilet or small, some pool or outside or anything. Uh, and you have to deny the access to the toilet by, by closing the bathroom, closing the bathroom door and putting a visual stop sign on the toilet, for example. Um, and we say that children who, <laughs> without this spectrum disorder who are playing with toilet water, they're not ready to, to be, to be uh, potty trained or toilet trained, right? Uh, they need to learn where is the place for playing, where is the place for uh, toileting or doing other stuff. So before we have all these prerequisites, we cannot uh, start toilet training. What if my child is afraid to have a bowel movement in the toilet and becomes constipated? It is very often and it's common for children with autism to hold in bowel movements while being potty trained. So you may not see them uh, poo in the toilet while you're uh, training them. Oftentimes, uh, children with autism wait until they get to their diaper and pull up at night so they can poop in it. That's it. If that happens, do not get discouraged. As I said, as peeing and pooping are two different parts of the toilet training. First, steps to, first step is to get your child to successfully pee in the toilet one at a time. Once your child with autism is peeing in the toilet at least 90% of the time, then you can start on poop training, okay? Uh, that's the same body training procedure. However, uh, you need to identify what time of the day your child is having a bowel movement and start uh, talking your child and taking talking with your child and taking him to the to the bathroom during that time. So you have to monitor, you have to observe you, your nanny, anyone, caregiver, whoever is with that child most of the time. Encourage your child to sit on the toilet and poop in the toilet. Um, also diet here, um, you need to have your child drink a lot of liquids, feed him with foods with lots of fiber. Um, you want them to have a soft stool so they can come out easily. And when your child with autism successfully poops in the toilet, you need highly to reinforce him for an extra with an extra special price that is uh, uh, that is essential if your child suffers from constipation regularly what you need to do you need to go and visit a doctor how and discuss how to resolve the situation appropriately that is it <clears throat> when to give up or take a break we often uh, cannot manage parents are frustrated children are refusing and uh, it can be uh, very challenging. And this toilet training, children with autism may take a long time. We need to be ready for that. As long as the child is making progress and uh, it is a positive experience, you need to continue with the process. Uh, however, we, we have, um, if the child becomes resistant to go to the bathroom, uh, or he doesn't want to sit in the toilet anymore, or if the child is having more accidents during the day in underwear, um, then you need to cut maybe the toilet training for a week or maybe to stop uh, the toilet training. There are some indicators that the child is not ready to be potty trained. And the, this time you need to take a break from potty training for at least one month two months and revisit it another time. So you need to observe and be sure that all the signs of readiness are there so we, you can continue with the training. Once everyone is ready, toilet training will be, I assure you, easy and positive experience for both child and the parent. All right, this is an example of a visual toilet routine. Visual toilet routine. 
it's very simple, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of uh, websites online that you can uh, visit simply browsing um, visuals for toilet routine and a lot of options will come out for you to print out and make a schedule for your child. It can be in one piece like this, bathroom sign, pants down, underwear down, seat, wipe or wash, stand up, underwear up, pants up, flush toilet, wash hands. You can have, as I mentioned, one piece of paper and with these pictures, or you can have each picture individually and you can put them in the order or child can uh, take out from the from the schedule which step he's finished. It's a very powerful uh, uh, material to use. So go on and browse after this. I hope you read. This is uh, one quote that I like regarding the toilet training. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And um, a study uh, shown and found out on the number of children with autism spectrum disorder require 1.6 years of toilet training to stay dry during the day, only to stay dry during the day, and sometimes more than two years to achieve bowel movements. It can be few years journey, but to achieve a lifetime of toileting independence is worth the wait, that's for sure. I will just uh, conclude this, that, that uh, toilet training Children with autism can be a very challenging process. Um, however, by planning ahead and having the right materials available, it can be done in addition structure, consistency, patience, the most important, the most important part, also contribute to successful potty training, toilet training. Toilet training can be positive and rewarding. And as I mentioned for, uh, both parents and um, children, rewarding experience. Um, it is a significant, significant accomplishment and it's one step closer to independence and no matter what we do, that's our uh, goal in working with children with autism, no matter what we are trying to teach them. So, thank you, that would be this, all right. Great. Thank you so much, Ragna, for that wonderful presentation and for trying to cover as much as ground as possible. And um, I know we have questions over here. We have a lot of questions. <laughs> so um, we can uh, probably take some uh, questions which uh, where where there are some common themes because there's a lot of questions and uh, I'm not sure if you would be able to take all of them we'll we'll try our best to take as many as we can yeah. um, so okay so I think you've covered a lot of ground already Dragna you <laughs> <laughs> you've um, <laughs> given a lot of so let's look at um, some of the questions that we have over here. Um, okay, so there's, um, so parents are asking about uh, the toileting accidents that happen that they are, um, the child, you know, not wanting to um, go near and, and sit. I think you've, you've pretty yeah. much covered that ground. Um, pretty well um being trained on the big potty seat but uh does not want to do on a portable pot in in standing position i think you've answered that right yes and it doesn't want to do on a portable seat then it's great <laughs> no need to do it the goal is to do it in a toilet where you're supposed to do it right perfect and uh the indicating uh being a concern um that not saying, not saying, not indicating. Would you like to say something on that? Uh, when, when that, that means the child is not aware. If child is aware of wetness and that has uh, urinated, then they will indicate the need and urge to go to the toilet and change. They will call us, they, they will try to get our attention and let us know that something is happening. 
Sure. We have some uh, questions as well that we can take uh, over here. Uh, we'll go in the serial order that they were placed. So uh, no offense to anyone. So Mr. Anish, there we go. I think you can, yeah. Yeah, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Thank yeah. you so much, ma'am, for taking my question. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, oh. Are you able to hear me now, ma'am? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Please, please uh, tell me yeah. your question. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll go on quickly. My eight-year-old, uh, he was in, he's autistic. He was in diapers till five. Didn't want it to use the bathroom or the toilet at all. Now, eventually he moved on to the bathroom for the urination and potty, both of them. But still he has that pod fear. He doesn't want to go near the pod. He doesn't want to use the pod. He knows the steps. He speaks. Even if you show him a chart, he'll tell you that these are the steps one by one. And uh, this is how we do it. He can show you visually also, uh, you know, in a um, systematic way how to do it. But he fears a lot using the pod anywhere, be it at home, at school, at a public place, in some hotel or restaurant. Uh, this is my experience that he has some, some sort of anxiety or pod fear kind of thing. So I'm not able to, uh, in fact, judge what exactly is the root cause because he sits down, does the potty flushes it into a drain actually we have a drain in the bathroom so yes. he knows the process he knows to urinate then wash his hand wash his bump also so i'm not uh, exactly gorging out where exactly are we lacking out you know why he doesn't want to use the pod even in india we have uh, bathrooms with pod there uh, the english toilet there so he uses the surface not the pod for defecation or uh, urination. He'll maintain a distance from the pod just so that he doesn't want to either see it or use it or go near it. So ma'am, if you can kindly suggest because it's been so many years and I have been training him from before uh, he was diagnosed with autism around the age of 2.6. And even at the schools, uh, at his therapy centers, at the special school he's going, they try to do it. Once or twice he has done it, but not in a regular manner. So if you can please suggest something on that. Thank you. Yes, if your child is scared of uh, uh, the toilet bowel, as you said, he does everything and that's really uh, very nice to and uh, great to hear. Uh, you did a lot of hard work, I can assume, I can say, and you accomplished a lot with your child. Uh, maybe you should just not push him anymore a little bit to give him a break from that. I don't know how often you're pushing him to do that, but uh, maybe you can take a break, as I mentioned. And then when everything settles down, you can introduce again. As uh, he's eight years old, right? You can use language, sit. Uh, therapists probably try that one. To sit uh, on a big potty, use it... Uh, maybe with a male member of the family, maybe that would be to assign one per person to go uh, to the toilet with him. That maybe will be, uh, will be uh, beneficial for that transition. And uh, that's it, but take a break a little bit. I don't know how often you do that. Maybe he got overwhelmed of pushing and pursuing and too much of uh, requests in front of him. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, we have Preeti next. Um, you can ask your question, Preeti. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Yeah, hi. hi. Actually, my question was that uh, my son, he's close to four years old and he's pee trained, like he goes to pee on the big potty seat, but when it comes to the poop, he is in like a, in habit of doing in a uh, standing position. So it's been a year now. I'm trying all the ways uh, to make him sit, you know, but he doesn't want to sit uh, while pooping. At all. Any, any... Not even in a, 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 this one. 
the big potty you know the one we use yes. so he pees there but uh, when it comes to the poop he likes to do in the portable pot but in the standing position he doesn't sit at all not in the standing position yes yes that because is- he's a, he was a total diaper baby until 3 years so he is kind of used to of in you know standing position yes that's uh, and even though he is very young and he's trained with the peeing with the uh, poop can be uh, pooping can also be uh, trained as a peeing uh, is he is peeing standing up right as i understood can you help me shani uh yeah yeah he, uh, yeah, yeah he urinates but standing up um, yeah. Uh, this position on the uh, toilet uh, bowel uh, has to be uh, introduced uh, step by step. I don't know how you did it and how you tried to make him do that at home uh, once you remove the diaper, uh, but set the timer. Let him, okay. sit, let him sit for 10 seconds. He doesn't have to okay. do, do that in, in that time. Yes, right. Yes, set the timer, five seconds, every day, five seconds, after okay. three weeks, increase the time, and so yeah. on and so on. Eventually, he will manage to sit down. Manage, okay. And he is able, and he is trained already on the halfway to, the, to this. Yeah. The most important thing is that he actually knows where to do that. So put the yeah. timer, force him to sit. What can you do? Force okay, him to yeah. So five seconds. It- talk nicely, dim the lights, is everything that I mentioned. And after that, increase the time. Eventually, okay. it will happen. Just be persistent. I think okay. that's in this uh, in this process. Like okay. Yeah? Okay, okay. I got it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, we have Milena next. Um, I know everyone's been waiting for quite some time. So thank you so much for your patience. Thank you. Um, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to, I just want to give the comment. I don't have a question. Um, I think that Dragana did an amazing uh, webinar and presentation. As you said, Ishani, she covered a lot of ground. I really have just positive comments. And I also wanted just to add for Preeti's a question that Andragana's uh, advice that after putting a child on the potty to sit for a five seconds, for example, when those sec- five seconds are gone, please reward the child for sitting for five seconds. After each increasing time, please reward the, the child for sitting because we are in that way, we are shaping the child's behavior and we are reinforcing the positive behavior. So that's all. So once again, um, thank you, Dragana. Thank you, Ishani, for giving us this real, um, real, uh, really good webinar. I really appreciate uh, Dragana's time and effort that she put in developing this amazing presentation with the background and all the advices and tricks with the real schedule. And I hope I will see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Um, Okay, uh, we have Neha and Nandita. Uh, uh, hello, ma'am. How are you? All good. Thank you so much. Yeah, actually, my son is six years old. He's a mild autistic with ADHD. And I'm trying his stalling training six, uh, since two years. Now he's indicating sometimes and we are following scheduling every half an hour to 45 minutes. Uh, he communicates the poops like he's always says potty potty, but he never says toilet. Like we always we ask to uh, go for the toilet, then only he goes. Otherwise, he sometimes accidents ha- happens. So what can we go further for this, ma'am? Uh, you, you don't want him to have accidents anymore? Or you want yes, him to sir. use different language? No, actually, he knows the toilet very well. Uh, we always ask to say, like Nivan says toilet. He says toilet and run away to the toilet and, and he uh, do it uh, independently very well. But the problem is he's not going by himself. We have to ask him to go for toilet, then only he goes. 
otherwise pot uh, poop see uh, says very uh, says very well and whenever he has the bowel movement he always says and go to toilet we don't have any problem with the bowel movement but we have the problem with the toilet training we have the skewing like for 30 to 45 minutes every 30 to 45 minutes we take him to the toilet but he indicates sometime uh by the signs but not always and by he never says by, by mouth so what can we do further to make him independent just uh, keep doing what you're doing show the picture and do it more often every time when he, when he does when he has an accident as i said tell him okay next time you should do that in the toilet you should ask if he's able i i i understood that he's able to ask so you have to next time take the picture and say what do you want what do you need and he will say like he says for the poo and he's in a very good way to learn that also i don't see here anything too much disturbing for you as a mother to be worried about his toilet training yes just keep doing what you're doing he's he's then excellent yes and i have a sticker picture also in front of the toilet with his real picture yes so that he can relate with the toilet also Excellent. but the pro- mm-hmm. yes but the problem is ki um, uh, like uh, i'm not able to make him independent i'm trying since 2 to 3 years but i'm not make it uh, i'm don't know what where where i'm lacking but i'm not able to make him independent i'm mm-hmm. trying everything independent in asking for the p yes 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 i i want he, he, whenever he feels to go for the toilet he can go independently i don't have to ask every time you want you yes. want to go to toilet you go yes that is our our concern when working with children with the autism don't wait for them to tell you ask them to go so eventually yes. if he is able he will learn you just need to continue with the pictures with the signs it's great thing you have real uh, real uh, real pictures in your in yes. encourage him and force him to tell you what he needs encourage him every time yes yeah and yeah and by the uh, always i have to show the pictures for the toilet yeah nivan Niva, you have to go to toilet always you always show the picture yes okay ma'am okay ma'am thank you so always much show the picture, yes and uh, almost uh, uh, how, um, how like uh, uh, it, it takes uh, uh, so much time for the toilet training it takes so much time for the toilet training yes patience oh. is, is, the, is our power yes yeah okay and one more question ma'am if the in the day day as by chance he got toilet in independently for the night time what we can do for the next uh, night time night, night, he wears diapers at night time or he has yes yes no 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 diapers then that can be another training for the night time toilet routine but you should also monitor your child what time during the night he does that check the check the diaper wake him up take him to the toilet at certain times that requires also a lot of time okay ma'am thank you so much ma'am Welcome. take thank care you. ma'am bye um uh nandita uh your question was similar to hi. what we asked about yeah the yeah hi hi ishani and hi um Nandita, yes. thank you so much for a wonderful session it was very very informative and thank you mom's belief for organizing something so wonderful and a very um pertinent topic with Uh, mothers and children my question was actually what neha had asked but it was related to night time uh, potty training actually because i have a 5 year old who is daytime potty trained so she at two and a half she has given up her pamper she's not autistic she's a and i wanted to know how to make her give up the nighttime pamper like she knows that she shouldn't go to the loo and she has to go to the loo and she has to go and pee but uh, she says i'm in deep sleep and i'm not able to understand that i've already peed so she wears a diaper so that's what i wanted to know but you said it's going to be another session um, if so. it will be another session yes but i can just give you a quick uh, uh, tip if yeah. she is aware that she does yeah. that during the night and she wants she yeah. is the one who wants the diaper right yeah yeah you can uh, uh, stop giving her drinks before going to sleep we do that we stop at 8 7:30 okay and then you can slowly let her try as we are trying okay. sitting on the potty for 5 seconds you can try with her laying in a bed without the diaper okay. next to you maybe 5 minutes 
Okay. And then you can okay. her until she falls asleep and so on and so okay. on. So you, yes, try step oh. by step and eventually she will fall asleep without diaper and she will not know that she does All right. Thank you so much. Thank Welcome. you so much. Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, we, <laughs> we I guess um, we still have uh, some questions, but we've we've tried to cover as much as possible. Uh, maybe just the one last thing. Someone's asked about the appropriate age. Dra Dragana, would you like to um, just throw some light on that? And uh, then appropriate maybe age, as, as I mentioned, yeah, appropriate age for children with autism spectrum disorder is four to five years uh, age, but everything depends on their in individual characteristics, right? If they are able to understand, if their cognition is on the certain level, if they have awareness, they are wet, you can train and start to train even earlier. Yeah, if they don't have any medical conditions, as I mentioned, then you're yeah. free to go, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a readiness, right? It's the child's readiness. Yes, that's yes. Important. it's all about the readiness. Before we don't have all the points in the readiness section, we cannot start part training. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much, uh, Dragna. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I know there's, uh, <laughs> we, we are getting a lot of questions and we've, um, yeah, but we've, try to cover as much as possible and we'll we'll have more sessions and we'll take up more of these questions um maybe you so, can suggest if there is going to be a video for the parents they can maybe watch again yes and and uh, also for everyone who has posted their questions um we, you can uh, email it to us uh, at contact at the rate momsbelief.com uh, and we'll we'll try and get uh, as much responses as as we can as well and and try and help you um so yeah uh, that that is something that that we can do because i'm sure everyone has their own individualized questions which are very specific to uh, children and we can address those right and thank you so much ragna for for being here today and for such a such an amazing webinar it's been really helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I hope I, I covered and tried and managed to give some answers to the concerns parents. And hopefully I will see you again. Yes, with some of your positive outcomes of your training. OK? Yes, <laughs> okay, parents, absolutely. that's for you. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. I think we would have to be wrapping up with our session for today. And uh, we'll, yeah, hopefully we have um, other webinars and, and we'll, we'll take it forward, right? Okay. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining today and for um, all your questions and uh, being a part. Um, yeah, please feel free to drop in, uh, drop in an email uh, with your specific questions. Thank you. Thank you.